Hello, everybody. This is Raquel Palmisi and Marilyn Monroe, and we are live for Wisdom Wednesday. It's good to be with you once again. I was just telling Marilyn that I've been doing these Wisdom Wednesdays for over a year. Yeah. I have a really big collection of these on my website and YouTube, and it's wonderful. People really do get a lot out of cruising through these offerings as they stay up there. So this is a very special moment in my life. <laughs> um, Marilyn and I have been um, in the same spiritual work together for couple of decades now huh? over over more yes and I asked her to join me today to talk about the subject of the very deep kind of spiritual work that we do what it has meant to us and what our journeys have been so if you saw my invitation today um, I wrote about the different types of spiritual paths. There can be um, m many different versions of a spiritual path. I just realized I wasn't in the Instagram thing. So <laughs> if I do that again, poke me. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're, we're on Instagram and Facebook. And Facebook is backwards and Instagram is not. <laughs> so... If I move this way on one, then I move the other way on the yeah. other one. And but you you all know about that, so thank you. So as I was saying, there are many different types of spiritual paths. Some are very serious and deep spiritual paths. Other ones are um, more generally about energy work and about a lighter version. There's nothing wrong with any of that. Um, we all have our own unique relationship with spirit, with God, um, and we all have our own work uh, to do here. The only thing that we want to do is be real about what we're called to, mm -hmm. and then when we're called to it, to be in it with all our whole heart. So Marilyn and I have both been on, uh, oh, I love this woman. <laughs> Marilyn and I have both been on an incredible healing journey over these couple of decades. Marilyn is a spiritual teacher in Austin, Texas. Uh, the people that she works with uh, adore her and, you know, expect her to be firm tough love with them, but also to hold a container of such deep respect and love for who yeah. they are. Yeah. And she has this unique ability uh, to really see people for even for the people that they don't know themselves to be yet. So she can see the versions of these people that have not been actualized yet. Yeah. And then she dives in with them and tries to um, get them to agree <laughs> to do the work. Of... And, and that's what they don't realize, that I'm actually going in the, into them with them. <laughs> You're going into them with them. <laughs> right. That's how I can give them the feedback that they don't know that they want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, Marilyn, would you just share um, with us a little bit about your own journey? Just whatever's in your heart to tell. I, I am one who was not seeking a spiritual path. I, I actually had never heard of healing work until until the day I heard of it. And I could just feel every cell in my body jumping around and I knew I wanted it. Not, not because uh, I was not aware of, of what was going on in there. I mean, I was completely unaware. I just knew I wanted to heal. I did not know what that meant. I started from the most basic place you could start, but I happened to have had a beautiful teacher, a very strong teacher, and, um, you know, between Spirit and our teacher, Charles, um, you know, they, they worked me over pretty good and made sure that I woke up. And 
um, you know, I felt like I, I felt like this a sledgehammer was coming down on me for years, just trying to crack the shell over and over again. Mm. Crack the shell, yes. Yeah, but you know, before I, I even came to that, I, I, I was called in the night. I didn't know what that meant, but my life did start to change after that. And I was being guided and didn't know I was being guided. You know, I just, I, I was, you know, just a very clueless person until, until I wasn't. <laughs> I remember Marilyn has been tested by spirit more than any other person I think that I've known. I mean, consciously saying yes. Yeah. Really listening and then consciously saying yes to things that sounded completely upside down. Like, okay, um, you have no money. <laughs> you are going to move to Michigan. <laughs> you are going to be there and see what happens. And, you know, you're meant to be teaching. You're meant to be sharing. But but how? What? what, what how? Where? And sure enough, you know, there she is. Yeah packing her car up or <laughs> driving, flying, however she gets there. Yeah. And that's kind of been your story a lot, hasn't it? It has, very much. I mean, if I had, if this plan had been laid out in the beginning, I, I don't know. I, I, I hate to say I don't think I would have done it, but it's likely that I wouldn't have done it. You know, it has to unfold in the moment. You have to arrive at a place where you can say yes. Um, I remember early on when Charles asked me if I would be willing to trust, I, I didn't even know what that word meant. I did not know how you would even use that word or who you would even trust. But I said, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to trust. And that literally got me through uh, the next 22 years. <laughs> trusting, just saying yes and trusting. Right. Yeah. And tell us a little more about doing such deep work that you kind of just turn your life over to it. Like how did you discover how did you discover God in all that? Yeah, that was kind of a big one for me because I I was raised in the Catholic Church, but when I was um nineteen I I just walked away. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I was a teenager who was beginning to question things, that's all that was. Um, and then, uh, you know, I met somebody that I started dating and who was Jewish. He, he had his version of the whole thing and I was 19, so I said, yeah, that. <laughs> so that, that took me further away. So I had to come to terms with that, that, that word God, that I had to start from scratch myself, and, and what did that even mean? <clears throat> one, one day my son was young, second grade, I think, and he said, Mom, who's God? <laughs> he had heard about God at school, and, and it just broke my heart that I never taught him. But I, I didn't know what to teach. I hadn't come to terms mm -hmm. with it myself. Sure. And I... You know, it was just a journey of, um, and it, it was various steps, you know, I, I got to where I could say, oh, okay, it's just a word that we use here. <laughs> you know, we go in, we go in, however we go in, and it, it, there were just steps of acceptance, and as I was going deeper and shedding the dense stuff, these these notions that we push aside begin to make sense and yeah you know a lot of things just start to happen then mm -hmm. um, the more of that density we clear we begin to find out what it is to be a human being what comes naturally to us it, it, you know we don't have to think about it or read it in a book it literally is who we are mm -hmm. and and clearing through the density allows that 
<clears throat> that part of us to begin to surface. And as a as a facilitator, how do you help people clear through the density? You know, I have to meet each person exactly where they are. Um, but it's a twofold thing. It's um, <clears throat> it's energy work. I think gives everybody a fighting chance because it'll it breaks stuff up and allows. In the early days, I used to get a picture of the density literally as gray clay, but it was kind of malleable. Mm -hmm. And when the energy work would go in there, I used to see it go in like a laser beam, just breaking that up so that it could begin to move mm -hmm. on the surface. Once that happens, then there are tools that each person can learn mm -hmm. to work with this stuff that's beginning to surface instead of being overwhelmed by it and overtaken and you know pulling back once you have tools you can meet it what are some of those tools they're so simple you know it's like breathe remember just to breathe feel, feel in your body where it is you can put your hand there and just breathe you consciously know what you're breathing into because you can feel it and it doesn't feel good yeah. you can breathe I used to say things like, breathe in God, ah, and breathe out the fear, or, uh, yeah. or whatever it is, you know, just get it moving, you work with it. Breathing in God, what a beautiful thing to feel. <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And to always remember that everything you're feeling is processy stuff. So. If you've got a story running that tells you where you're arguing, that tells you you're right and the other person's wrong, or you're right and I'm wrong, <laughs> it's the ego fighting to con maintain control. So if, if you can remember that, and I remind people that over yes, and over do. again. Yes, you do. Because you need a reminder. When you're processing, your brain's not working. <laughs> so you just remember that. It's just process. Let it go. Don't hold on to it and let go of the need to be right and the need to fight <laughs> and you know trust does play a big part and I had somebody ask me recently you know well what does that look like and I said well don't think about it, it it's you have to just be with that and feel it and know in the background that you are giving trust a chance but the big thing is breathe and surrender and don't buy into it and the, the belief systems ah gotta go <laughs> your belief systems the old beliefs of yeah that you've hang, hung on to for your whole life and things. they keep you stuck right in place the stories yeah. that that seem so true and that like her yeah and, th and those were all the signs that let you know yeah. <laughs> that you're emotionally attached to that belief system and it serves as a great big block mm -hmm. you'll never access your heart as long as that belief system is sitting there so my experience with Marilyn has a lot to do with um, a couple of moments in time when um, you know she has worked so hard on her releasing her own demons mm -hmm. and not the easiest life, probably not a life someone would choose, sort of like being a monk, but being in life, not in an ashram or not in a cave somewhere. Yeah. But also to live a very humble and simple life. And my my knowing of Marilyn ever since I met her is that she's a very loving person. I mean, everybody just wants to be close to Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened over the years is as she began to be able to really release some of that density that she's talking about herself, the love that came out of this woman started becoming very powerful. <laughs> And she will cry like in a split second. 
because her heart gets touched so easily because there's so much love in there that she barely knows what to do with it. Mm. Yeah. And when that love is focused on someone she's working with, whether she's doing the hands-on work and they're breathing and sometimes writhing all over the table and sometimes really releasing or sometimes just very quietly feeling their own hearts open. Yeah. Right. This love like holds them and wraps them. And that is pure divinity coming through her. So she has, you know, definitely found her calling. Yeah. And that calling has not only called her, but if I might say, it has gifted her as well with her work and touching the lives of so many people. Am I right or am I right? You're right. <laughs> You're always right. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we can debate on that one. So, Marilyn, I wonder if while we have you here, if maybe you would be willing to just kind of drop in, you already are, mm -hmm. and maybe take us on a little five-minute um, meditation or inward journey. Okay. Okay, so let's start by closing our eyes and um, take a couple of nice deep breaths. Inhale to say a count of five, nice and slow, through your nose. Hold it for a couple of seconds. And exhale to the count of seven, very slowly. And feel yourself dropping in to your body, into your heart. Feel your shoulders dropping. Feel the energy between your ears. There's almost a volume to it when you're quiet. Put your hand on your heart and really feel yourself. Take another deep breath. The journey of inner, the inner journey of self-discovery is a big, big, beautiful journey. And in that comes an awakening and definitely a discovery of self. I think it's important to know thyself. Your heart is precious. Your heart beats for you. Honor it. Let yourself feel your heart always, every day, lots of times during the day. Settle into yourself. Be with yourself. Honor yourself. Even if it's only for a minute, You will become very sensitive to yourself, to energy, perhaps to your guidance. It's a wonderful thing to do. It's a wonderful place to, sit, to start. Take another deep breath. And from this place in your heart, start to come back and open your eyes and hold that energy in your heart. Thank you.
you Helen. You're welcome. As you can probably feel, there were several layers, levels of um, what was going on there in the brief meditation. There were Marilyn's beautiful words and the heart of the life that has gone into those words, the knowing, the true knowing, they're not just words to her. And then below that is all of the energy that comes through this amazing woman. And even beneath that is the divinity that flows when she speaks and when she works and when she lives, <laughs> when she loves, that we become touched by something much bigger than ourselves. It gives us hope and it gives us um, a path to walk that's very powerful, mm -hmm. very deep, and it's definitely a choice. It is a choice, yeah. It's a good choice. It's a hard choice. <laughs> it's a hard choice. <laughs> but I don't know if it's any easier to stay uh, unawoken to this. You know, I think. This is a hard choice, but it is a beautiful one. We get to experience a big life. But you know, um, it is hard, but I think there's more to say about that. It's You're facing off with yourself, and <clears throat> we all discover an inner strength we didn't know existed. Yes, true. And there's a, an enormous amount of self-gratification and confidence building eventually because um, you you can you can be face to face with something that brings up all kinds of fear or all kinds of rage and you don't know what you're gonna do and all of a sudden you work through it and you're like whoo I didn't die here I am <laughs> right it's gone yes and so it is <laughs> yes and so it is and so it is yeah <laughs> all right Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you for inviting me. Thank you everyone for tuning in to whether you're here with us now or whether you tune in later. All love to you. Gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.